Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to look at auto oxidation and how it relates to food spoilage. Auto oxidation is a really slow process and it happens with a variety of organic matter, including functional groups like ethers. So let's start there. Here I have an ether where I have an oxygen and then two alkyl groups on either side. When an ether encounters the oxygen from the air over a long period of time, it's going to end up going through a process where adjacent to the oxygen, you get a OOH group. That's a peroxide group when you have that OO bond. And the problem is with respect to ethers is that peroxides are pretty, um, oh, what's the word, sensitive? And to the point where they, if you heat them, can become explosive. So you have to be really careful with these in chemistry lab. Now in real life, where you're experiencing auto oxidation uh, in your house, is the auto oxidation of triglycerides. Right? Triglycerides are essentially fats, and what are happening, or what is happening, is your triglycerides that have alkene functionality, right? So here I have some alkenes in my triglyceride these are going to be susceptible to auto oxidation because adjacent to that alkene functionality, an OOH group can form. And this is what leads to food spoilage and that, uh, that smell of a rancid fat. If you've ever experienced rancid fat before, it is not pleasant. Now notice, this happens adjacent to alkenes. These alkenes are units of unsaturation. In real life, you would call this an unsaturated fat. If there were more than one unit of unsaturation, it would be a polyunsaturated fat. If it was one unsaturation, it would be a monounsaturated fat. And you know that in general, these are the fats that are better for you because the ones that are not so good for you are gonna be the saturated fats. Now, what does that mean? Well, saturated fats can be created by humans. Why would we do this? Well, if the pi bonds are what are making this fat susceptible to auto oxidation, then if we saturate the pi bond by removing it and allowing it to react with hydrogen and get rid of it, then we're less susceptible to auto oxidation. So that's what's going to happen here. So we hydrogenate the triglycerides. If you've ever looked at the back of the regular Jif peanut butter, unless they've changed the ingredients since the last time I looked, it says hydrogenated vegetable oils. Right. Hydrogenated means they've taken that triglyceride and we've gone through the hydrogenation process that you learned about in chemistry class, where you add hydrogen gas and a platinum palladium or nickel catalyst, and it saturates that carbon-carbon bond by removing the pi bond and allowing the hydrogen to react across it to create a carbon that instead of being sp2 hybridized is now sp3 hybridized. This ends up being one way to preserve food, is to prevent it from spoiling quickly by reacting with the functional group that causes the spoilage. So hydrogenated oils and hydrogenated fats and, and food products made with hydrogenated oils have a longer shelf life. They can last for a much longer time than things that are not hydrogenated. Another thing that can happen is when you hydrogenate fats, you can turn inexpensive liquid fats into solid fat, and that can be uh, beneficial for the food industry as well. There is another type of preservative that when you start reading your ingredient labels, you'll notice is all over the place. Uh, this one is called butylated hydroxytoluene. It's abbreviated BHT. 
There's another one called butylated hydroxyanisole, uh, which is BHA, and they function the same way. These are radical inhibitors. Remember, we're in the radical chapter, so this auto-oxidation is a radical pathway. And so this radical inhibitor is going to behave as a preservative by preventing the radicals from working to spoil your food. So what does it do? Well, when you have a radical encounter this preservative, this BHT, what happens is a hydrogen abstraction. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, but you just said in an earlier video that hydrogen abstraction just created another radical. And that is true. The thing is that the radical that's created from hydrogen abstraction of butylated hydroxytoluene is not very reactive at all. So we've essentially killed the R radical and kind of killed all of the radical in a way because now the radical that we've formed on the oxygen is not one that's going to readily react for two reasons. One is sterics, right? Steric hindrance. You have these big tert butyl groups on either side. This is going to be really silly, but I'm going to say it anyway. In my brain, what I imagine when I see these tert butyl groups, imagine my arms are the tert butyl groups and my head is the radical, right? And some other radical is coming to try to react with me and the tert butyl groups are just like, get out of here, right? They're just whacking the other radicals like tennis rackets. Is that what's actually happening? N no. Um, but those tert butyl groups are big, they're bulky, they're taking up space. Another radical would really have to uh, overcome a serious energy barrier to react with that oxygen. Another thing that causes this radical to not be as reactive is the fact that the radical is in conjugation or is resonance stabilized with the benzene ring. So that oxygen radical is resonance stabilized with all of this ring. And those are our two things that make this a really good preservative because it will react in a propagation step with a radical that could have spoiled your food, but then the radical it forms is not reactive. When you start looking at ingredient labels, you're going to see BHT or BHA in things like salami or other meats. Um, you are going to see BHA or BHT in some deodorants. You're going to see it in the breads that are on uh, the shelves in the grocery aisle, the ones that can last a ridiculously long time. And we consume a lot more of this than we recognize. I remember being a student in organic chemistry and my chemistry teacher telling me that he had a friend who worked in the morgue and that his friend who worked in the morgue said that bodies just don't decompose the same way they did in the 60s. And I think that what he meant by that was because we've consumed so many preservatives that essentially after we die, we aren't rotting as quickly as uh, we did before the age of preservatives uh, and the beginning of the you know, food industry. Let's wrap up. In this video, we talked about auto oxidation. It's a really slow process that happens with the oxygen in the air, and it ends up spoiling or rotting organic things. And of course, your food is organic, and so it leads to food spoilage. For us to try to circumvent that, uh, the food industry has come up with solutions like hydrogenating oils to prevent the alkene functionality from even being present so that you don't get food spoilage. And then by accident, we created trans fats, and then also um, utilizing things like butylated hydroxyanisole and butylated hydroxytoluene as radical scavengers to prevent that radical from reacting with the uh, food at all whatsoever by first reacting with the radical scavenger and being used as a preservative. Thanks so much for watching. This is Katoni signing out.